what is going on everybody it's roku back with some more league of legends content and today i have made a very very nice guide for you this is how to dodge in league of legends and in this video i will be talking about essentially everything that you need to know about dodging in order to use this exploit this skill and to basically artificially improve your win rate and speed up your climb now this is a bit of a different style of video than i usually make some of my you know regular viewers will notice i can't really go into you know into the game to show anything about dodging it's more of like a client thing so for this video i prepared a nice little presentation which contains all the information in a nice organized fashion so that you can basically you know um so that i can present it to you i guess so if you guys like this style of video be sure to leave it in the description or in the comments and you know i can make way more videos with this style so if you guys like this let me know and yeah i'll make more videos with this style anyway let's just get right into the video remember to like comment and subscribe i want to hit 10,000 subscribers by the summer so yeah if you're not subscribed already please subscribe and hit the bell notification anyway what is dodging dodging is basically when you go into champion select and you quit the champ select or you you know you exit the client before you know all the champs are locked in and before you get into game now how do we dodge in order to dodge we can either quit the client you know with the x and exit now alternatively you can just wait until the timer hits zero seconds and just don't pick your champion now quitting saves you some time to just quit the client but if you have some issues with your computer where opening the client is like a little difficult or you just don't want to you know close the client then just wait until zero seconds and you will you know get back into the lobby and you know you'll just you'll have dodged the game basically and this is like waiting out the time and not picking a champ is more reliable than quitting a client because sometimes it bugs right so yeah and we have successfully dodged a match. I didn't want to do this in solo queue because, you know, I don't want to lose LP for nothing. So, yeah, that's an example of how to dodge. Now, what does dodging do? You know, the, the effect of this is very, very simple. I've already told you, right? You dodge in champ select so you don't get into the game with these players, with these champions, with these teams. What are the other effects of dodging? Now, when you dodge you lose LP, and you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can queue up again. And that's in solo queue. The effects of the other game modes are, you know, a bit different. But as you can see, I can't queue up again because of the dodge timer. I have to wait these five minutes, and then I can queue up again. Now, your first dodge in solo queue, of course, I'm only going to talk about solo queue. Your first dodge will get you negative three LP, and you will have to wait six minutes before you can queue up again. And any additional dodge within, within the next 24 hours or 16 hours will lose you around 10 LP further, right? So let's say you dodge one game, you lose 3 LP. And then if you dodge again, you will lose 10 LP. So you have to wait like a full day and then you can dodge again. Some people say it's 16 hours, some people say it's 24. But, you know, I would wait the full 24 before dodging again if you want to save yourself 10 LP. But we'll get into that later. If you dodge twice in a row instead of a six minute timer you get a 30 minute timer what do i mean by dodging twice in a row now think of the lp penalty and the you know time penalty being on two different timers you know so with the lp penalty your first dodge is negative three lp and then if you dodge again within the next 16 to 24 hours you will lose 10 lp but with the timer penalty if you dodge once you have a six minute penalty but if you dodge instantly, like when you queue up again, like within the next hour after the six minute penalty, if you queue up again and dodge that, then you get a 30 minute penalty. But if you wait like an hour or you dodge, then you play a game and then you dodge again, then you will lose 10 LP, but you will only get a six minute penalty. So yeah, that's how like these two things, the time and the LP loss are on like their own you know timers but that's basically how it works if you dodge during a promo game you that promo game will be counted as a loss and one more thing 
be sure to dodge before the last 15 seconds. I've, I've seen some rioters say this, but if you exit the client like 10 or 15 seconds before the game is about to load, then you can kind of like the client can bug as we all know how well Riot's client works. It's full of bugs. So sometimes your client can bug and you'll just go into game anyway. So in order to make sure that you dodge the game, quit the client and then open it back up to make sure that you're not in champ select. So, and if you do this quickly enough, you can basically guarantee that you dodge. And the big thing about dodging, which makes it such an invaluable skill, is that if you dodge, you do not lose MMR. Before we continue, I have to explain the difference between MMR and LP. And okay, by the way, here's a little table I have for the penalties of dodging in every single one of these game modes. And I'm not going to talk about this. If you want to see the specific penalties for the game modes that you play, pause the video and check this table out. I got this from the League of Legends wiki. Okay, let's get into it. What is LP and what is MMR? Now, in League of Legends, your rank is determined by two things. Your LP, or your visible rank, and your MMR, your invisible rank. By LP, I also mean like your actual rank, like gold, silver, diamond, the things that display your rank on your profile or on OPGG, whereas MMR is like a number that determines what your rank is behind the scenes, you know? And there's actually no way of determining what exactly your MMR is. The only people who know your MMR are Riot, you know? So you yourself can't tell what your MMR is exactly. Now, your LP does not matter as much as your MMR. Your MMR is all that matters because your MMR decides how much LP you win, how much LP you lose, what rank you are at the end of your promos. Um, if you have very good MMR, you can actually skip ranks. All of this, like how much, how will you perform in solo queue in terms of like, you know, your movements within visible ranks is purely dependent on your MMR. So if you're a gold player, with an immense, like, incredible amount of MMR, you can play with Platinums, and vice versa. If you're a Diamond player with very, very bad MMR, you can play with Platinums. So it's like your visible rank is only second to your MMR. Your MMR decides who you play against and your gains and etc. So your MMR is very, very important. We don't exactly know what like the MMR is determined by, but in my experience, your MMR is affected by two things roughly your win rate, and whether you're on a win or a lose streak. So if you have a very, very high win rate, the system will think that you belong in a higher rank. So because of that, your MMR will be pretty good, you know? You'll be matched with better players in higher ranks, you will you will gain more LP, you will lose less LP, etc, etc, etc. And it's also true vice versa. If you have a low win rate, then you will lose more LP, you will gain less LP, and you'll be playing with and against worse players in lower ranks. The best way to change your MMR is by win streaks and lose streaks. If you just win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, then your MMR is not really going to move that much. But if you suddenly win three or four or five games in a row, then your MMR will spike up and improve. The same for losses. If you lose four or five games in a row, your MMR is going to die. So, like, basically, like, you know, only win streaks and lose streaks are the things that can, like, you know, majorly impact your MMR to the point where it's noticeable, you know? Now, the more games you play on an account, the more rigid the MMR is. What do I mean by this? The more games you have, the harder it is to move your MMR. So, like, if you have an account with thousands and thousands of games, you know, or like 800 games then your MMR is going to be stuck like a rock. It's going to be very difficult to move your MMR. You're going to have to win so many games in a row to actually improve the MMR of that account. But if you don't have many games on an account, or if it's a very fresh account, then you can very, very easily change the MMR of this account. So instead of having to win like eight or five games to improve your MMR, you just have to win like three, you know? So it's way easier to improve your MMR on a like a an account with less games than an account with many games. And by the way, this is the reason why so many high level players like to basically play on accounts with less games than on accounts with more games. Because if you're, just think about it logically, if you're on an account that's a fresh account with no ranked games, then it's very easy to improve your MMR 
and you know you have to win less games to get your MR to a good state, whereas you know just grinding on another account which already has tons and tons of games on it. So yeah, that's basically the difference between LP and MMR. Remember, MMR is way, way, way more important than LP. This is important. The visible rank, your LP, it's basically just a pixel on the screen. So your LP doesn't matter, your MMR does. Why should you learn how to dodge? Now, like I've made this point here already, but because your MMR is the only thing that matters, just think about it. If you dodge, you lose LP. And you lose time. If you go into a losing game or a game where you are very likely to lose, you lose LP, MMR, and time. Which one of these is basically worth it? Of course, you know, just dodge. Dodging is a very nice way to, you know, spare yourself headache, spare yourself time, and spare yourself your climb. Then now, by learning how to dodge effectively, you're basically artificially improving your win rate, right? Like. If you can dodge very well, if you know what games to dodge, if you know how to dodge specifically, then you know you're just basically not playing the games that you're destined to lose. You know, like riot sometimes, right? Not all the time, but there are some instances where a riot matches you up with like the worst players, or somehow you get a very very bad team composition that you have to fight. And if you dodge properly, then you're not losing these games. You're not losing the MMR riot made you lose. So you're just winning the games you're supposed to win. So, you know, if you're... Like, there are three types of games. Easy wins, easy losses, and the games where it's like, you know, it can go either way. If you're eliminating the easy losses, then you're basically just improving your win rate for free. So if you're a lower elo player, especially, and you want to climb quickly, then you got to learn how to dodge. But if you're a higher elo player, like, you know, knowing how to dodge is a must. If you don't know how to dodge, as a person who's higher than Diamond 2, then, like, you know, you are in such big trouble. Because you're going to be losing so many games that are lost if you don't know how to dodge. Please, for the sake of God, if you're a high-low player, learn how to dodge ASAP. Anyway, because you lose LP while dodging, it might look bad in the short while because you're losing LP, right? And LP is how you get to the next visible rank. But remember... Your MMR is the thing that matters. So over a longer period of time, you'll be thanking yourself because you're not basically tanking your MMR for games that you should have lost. When should you dodge? If your teammates or your one trick is banned, then it's a very, very nice idea to just dodge that game. Now, I am a Darius one trick, and if my Darius is banned, I just dodge. Now, I do know how to play Mordekaiser, but it's like I, I don't like it because Darius is more fun for me. And if I'm on my higher elo account, I'm not gonna play Mordekaiser because my Darius is my best champion. And when my Munchuk is banned, I am basically gimping my team because they don't have as strong a top laner as if I had my Darius. Same for you. If your one trick is banned, then you should 99% of the time dodge the game. No questions about it. You're not some anime main character who's going to, you know, suddenly pick up a champ and win the game. You know, this is the real world. You lose when you don't play your best. So try not to play games when your one trick is bad. Same for your teammates. If your jungler is like a Chaco jungle and his Chaco gets banned, so he has to first time something, then it's probably a very good idea to dodge that game. Now, in terms of like, you know, League of Legends etiquette, I guess, or like, you know, being honorable. If you're one trick, it's your responsibility to, to, to dodge that game. But if you have, like, you know, a, either a guy who's mentally ill or a guy who doesn't care, when their one trick gets banned and they're not dodging, then I'm sorry, but you or someone else on your team has to dodge. And honestly, like, you know, if you're dodging, you're doing yourself a favor because you don't have to play with this human being. So, yeah, you know, just dodge games where there's one trick on your team whose one trick gets banned because like if they're not going to do it then you know you have to do it be the bigger man be honorable and just do it if you are autofilled or if your team has a bunch of autofills then it's a very very good idea to dodge now league is kind of like you know very bad in this situation because in those ranked games that you were destined to lose, most of them are indicated by the amount of autofills you have, you know? So basically, when you get into a game, you have to like count the number of autofills you have 
first thing into the game, you know, when you look your teammates up. And I will show you how to look up your teammates soon, later in the video. So look up your teammates and see if they're on roll or off roll, right? If they're all like, you know, on roll, then, you know, you pass the first check and you can go into your next checks that I have on the slide. But if you have two autofills, then it's a very, very good idea to dodge because like in general, you should probably expect nothing from an autofill, not even nothing. You should expect an autofill to just int. So if like, you know, you have an autofill bot lane, fully autofill bot lane, just have it in your head that they're going to int. You know, 70% of the time, they're just going to int and lose bot lane hard. And do you want to fight a fed enemy bot lane? No. Then it's a good idea to dodge. It's like, you know, it's how it basically works is that, you know, an ultimate player not only doesn't know how to play that role, they're in a bad attitude. Because imagine you are a top laner one trick and you get auto filter role that you don't even care about, you know? You're already in a bad mental, you have to rely on your teammates to carry, and you're basically like, okay, I can't impact this game. So if you're auto filled yourself, then it's probably a good idea to dodge. If it's a role that you cannot play, if it's a role that you trust yourself in playing, then good, you know? But try to understand that you can play at most two roles decently. You know, if you're telling yourself that you're, oh, you're a fill player, then you're lying to yourself because, you know, no player can play all five roles well at the same time in 99% of ELOs. There are some players in Challenger or Grandmaster who've played so many games of League of Legends, like thousands and thousands and thousands a season that, you know, they're pretty much like they're very good in all roles or at least they're carryable in some roles. But, you know, if you're playing with normal players, you know, like in Platinum or Low Diamond, chances are, like, fill players are just delusional. So try not to, you know, try to understand what roles you're the best at and avoid the other roles, you know. So, yeah, try to understand, like, you know, like how, like, bad autofill is and dodge autofilled teammates. Like, dodge games, we have autofilled teammates. Now, this is a tip for, like, a bit higher elo people like basically above diamond diamond and above diamond if you have an autofill jungler dodge the game having an autofill top is okay you know as like you know it's it, and this is for when you only have one autofill which i said in like i said in the slide if you only have one autofill it's usually fine to just play the game but if this autofill is a jungler then the game is lost if it's a top laner then, you know, they can just play, like, a fill tank or whatever. If it's a mid laner, then, you know, anyone can play mid lane, you know, because you can play virtually anything mid lane. As long as you're making plays with your jungler, you should be fine. Support is, like, a, like, you know, a support diff is noticeable, but, you know, a fill player can be support as long as they have a decent ADC and vice versa. And ADC can be filled as long as they have a decent support. But a jungler, having a jungle diff in a game is actually, like, unplayable. You know, because, like, if the enemy jungler is ganking, you know, destroying all these lanes, you just can't play the game, and your jungler is dying to, like, Krugs, then that game is going to be impossible to play and impossible to win. So if you have a filled jungler, especially for the people who are, who are high low, dodge the game. It's not worth it. It's You can't do it. Just dodge the game if you have a filled jungler. Here's another tip for the high elo people. If you're playing with someone who you know is mentally ill, then dodge the game. What do I mean by this? So in general, if your team has toxic people in champ select who are just going crazy, then dodge, right? So this applies to all elos, this first part of this tip. So if you load into champ select and you find someone who's really, really toxic, who's an asshole, who's holding a champ select hostage, just really, really toxic, garbage human being who has a very bad attitude they're like you know maybe they lost a lot of games and they're like okay whatever let's just end this you know these kinds of people who have a bad attitude then you gotta you gotta dodge that game because like 99 percent of the games are determined by mentality you know if your team doesn't have a good attitude then it doesn't matter if you have like a good team comp or whatever you're gonna you're gonna lose that game if the enemy team is has stronger mental so if you have someone on your team that has weak mental, dodge. Because even if it is one person with bad mental, that person is going to tilt everyone else on the team, right? So this one, like, you know, tilted person is going to spread the tilt like it's like some sort of virus. So you're going to be like, 
half your team is tilted. And you can't win the game when half your team is tilted from minute zero. Now, what do I mean by playing with someone who you know is mentally ill? For the high elo people who play in, like, Diamond 2 above for a West, I'm not sure what the numbers are for other regions because I'm not sure of the player volume, but in general, if you play in an elo where you recognize the people you're playing with and against, like, you know, oh, that Nunu Jungle, I played with him or against him in the same game, right, for three games already, then it's about time you have, like, a list of players that you should avoid like the plague. Some people are just to be avoided, you know, some people are mentally ill, they're just unstable, you know, and they don't even have to type anything in chat for you to know that they're just horrible and going to lose you the game. Avoid these players, right? You know how Tile 1 used to have an int list? Try to make a list like that, but a dodge list, you know, like dodge this player, dodge that player, dodge this player, dodge that player, so you can basically save yourself the headache of playing with some of these degenerate human beings. And this is very, very important if you are like, you know, it's very important if this is a player that you have like personal issues with, you know, if this player and you have disagreed in the past, then you have to dodge them because if they're mentally ill and they have problems with you, they're going to end you. So like, just dodge these players, dodge these hyper toxic pieces of shit. They're not worth your time or your headache. A tip that I forgot to mention for the one trick is... If you dodged a game, or if someone dodged a game where your one trick was banned, I think it's a good idea to wait five or six minutes before queuing up again, because, like, you know there's someone in queue who's banning your one trick, and you want to avoid them, right? So, if your one trick is banned, and you dodge or someone else dodges, then try to wait some time before queuing up again, so you don't run into the same guy who counterpicks you or, you know, messes up your champion. Or, not messes up, bans your champion. If your team is full AD or full AP and the enemy has tanks, then you should dodge the game. Now, it's way worse if it's full AD than AP because AD is way easier to itemize against than AP. But basically, if the enemy has tanks and you have one source of damage, then your team is going to be messed up because you can't effectively deal with their tanks. Unless you get someone who gets insanely fed, then you won't be able to deal with their tanks. Not to mention how if you have only one source of damage, your guys are going to get outscaled in team fights very quickly. So you don't want to put your team in a position where you have to end the game within the first 25 minutes or it's basically just over. Now, if your team is full AD or AP, but if the enemy team has no tanks, then you're free to just play the game out, right? It's okay if the enemy has no tanks. Only full AD or AP and they have like two tanks or so. So yeah, keep that in mind. Speaking of team comps, if the enemy team composition is better than yours, or they have a team comp that's just horrible for your champion, then you should dodge the game. What do I mean by this? So in League right now, in most ELOs and with most you know team comps, split pushing isn't gonna be like a thing, right? Unless you're playing one of the few champions who can do it, like Fiora, Camille, Trindamir, Jax, you're not gonna be looking for split pushes a lot. Avoid split pushes and think about the team fights. Which one of these teams is way better at team fighting? If it's like, you know, their enemy team is 10 times better than your team at team fights, <clears throat> then you should probably dodge, you know? And if you're like a jungle player who you, you play like aggressive champs, but like you play Olaf, but your whole team is like late game champions, then maybe you should dodge because these guys aren't going to be able to help you out that much. And especially if the enemy team has early game champs, you're basically alone versus the entire enemy team. So maybe you shouldn't play this game out, you know? So just think about your team. Think about the enemy team. Think about how you work with your team, how the enemy team works together, and how these two teams clash. And make a decision on which team comp is better and, you know, whether you should play the game out or not. For one trick specifically, if the enemy team comp or, you know, for people who know that champion very well. If the enemy team comp is something that you hate playing against, or something that your champion does very badly against, then you should dodge. What am I, what am I saying? Like, something like, you're playing Darius, you're with Darius one trick, and the enemy team is tank, CC, like, you know, Zillion, not tank, but like, these guys, like, you know, Zillion, Thresh, Leona, you know, Syndra, Seraphine, these champions who can just keep you at arm's length, 
and keep you CC'd for like 50 fucking minutes and you can't get to the enemy backline to do your damage. If it's these kinds of champions, this kind of team composition, you should probably dodge the game to spare yourself a headache. In these kinds of team comps, it does not matter if you win lane because you're not going to be able to do too much in team fights unless you're like, you know, shockingly fed. And even if you are shockingly fed, they're going to outscale you so fast because they just have the a team comp that's essentially designed to beat you. So you have, if they have a lot of revives and etc., then it's probably a good idea to dodge the, you know, dodge the game. <clears throat> if you're laning against a matchup that you hate playing against, it's a good idea to dodge the game, you know. So let's say um, you play uh, Camille, you know, let's say you play Jax. And you have to ban Malphite, but then the enemy picks Darius. And if you, as a Jax player, always lose to Darius, then just dodge the game. You know, you don't want to deal with that because it's annoying, you know? If you're a Trindamere player, you ban Jax or, like, Malphite, and the enemy team picks Darius, and, you know, you're sick of playing against him. Just dodge the game, you know? Save the LP. Dodging matchups is very useful if you, like, you know, you have to ban a popular pick, and then the enemy picks a very specific pick that you can't fight against. So, yeah, you're not some hero, like I said, you're not an anime main character who's suddenly going to get better and win a matchup that you yourself always lose. If it's a matchup that you hate playing against, or if it's a matchup that you just, you know, like, that just always beats you somehow, then you should dodge. If you are playing, let's say, like a Jinx or a Jin, you have no peel, and the enemy picks like a Rengar or a Kha'Zix, then it's also maybe a good idea to dodge. Like, just think about, you know, what champions really, really mess you up, and you have no ways of dealing with them, you know? Just think about it like that. Let's say if you're if it's the same situation, but you have peel, then your, your peel is going to help you out, and he's just going to peel the Rengar off of you, and you're just going to murder him in 2-3 shots. So, think about the champions specifically that you hate playing against. If you're a high elo player, and let's say you know that there's a very, very good player on the enemy team who's laning against you, then it might be a good idea to dodge and, you know, spare your LP. If, like, you know, you're in D2 or low diamond and you know there's a monstrous jungle smurf that's alive right now, that's, like, on in queue right now, who's going to basically win 80% win rate, then dodge if he's not on your team. Because you don't want to lose a game like, you know, that you're destined to lose because the enemy team got some smurf who's basically a monster, you know? So this is only applies to higher elos, by the way. If you're in lower elos, this does not matter because you're very, very like unlikely to run into the same player twice. But if you're in higher elos, like high diamond or so, and you know there's a monster smurf or like a guy who's just really, really good at the game, like a streamer or something, I don't know, like a pro player who's in queue and you're not very confident, then you... It's, it's not the worst idea to dodge games because, you know, let's say you're a top laner and you're laning against TF Blade. You know, you don't want to, like, you know, you don't want to challenge this guy. Just let him go into the next game, let him take someone else's LP, and then you fight against someone who's on your level and beat them. Now, if your teammates are on big, big loose streaks, you should probably also dodge the games. So when you look up your teammates, look at their past match history. If they have a lot of losses, you know, like, they lose, 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 then it's probably a good idea to dodge that game because this player is already tilted. This player already has, you know, problems. You know, you don't want to deal with this guy because they're going to be in going into the game tilted. They're going to be going into the game not really ready to play it out, bad mindset, and if they don't talk. So by looking at the enemy's past matches, you're detecting tilt and learning how to deal with it, you know? So it's a very, very good way of avoiding, you know, basically degenerates, you know. And how do we look up our teammates? This is basically a part that I saved for a while because I had to wait the time route because I dodged earlier in the video. But basically, um, let's say you get into a game, you know, we get into a game. Uh, a champ select, actually. So what you do here is you drag and select all of these names, join the lobby, join the lobby, you copy, control C, and then you go to OPGG, and you paste here. Right? So then you get the past matches of all of your teammates, basically. Now, I know that, you know, these guys aren't really ranked players, because this is a normal game, 
but you kind of get the idea, you know? You get their, you know, past games here, wins, losses, etc., etc., and you get their win rates. Are they, are, did they select the champ that they're good at? You know, let's say this guy, JK Kabuto, is he a Lucian player? Yes, he's not the best, but he can play it, you know? Is this guy a Victor player? Not really, he's kind of bad at Victor, etc., 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 etc. I'm not trying to, you know, insult these guys because these guys aren't ranked players. They're probably just playing for fun. But you kind of get the idea, you know? Look at their past games. They're supposed to show up like this. Win streaks, lose streaks, etc., etc., etc. Another tool is poorprofessor.gg, right? You do this, you paste it here or there, and you basically get things like, you know, oh, he's first game of the day. So, you know, it's, if it's someone's first game of the day, Maybe they're not, you know, warmed up. Oh, it's a one trick. And if it's banned, right? If someone's one trick is banned, that's a good, like, indication that, hey, this guy's going to end this game. And you get all these kinds of nice little, you know, indications that can basically help you, you know, judge things, you know. this Doing it in Poor Professor is better if you aren't used to analyzing people because in Poor Professor, it kind of does the thinking for you with these kinds of things, you know? But in OPGG, you do the thinking for yourself, but you get more in-depth stats. So yeah, I'm gonna dodge this because I have no intention of playing a <laughs> normal game. So yeah, those are basically when you should be dodging. Now, there, there are some things that you should be looking out for, you know, some special tips. So first tip, if you're at a low amount of LP, let's say 1 LP, 3 LP, you know, and the next dodge will put you at 0 LP, then you should probably not dodge. Now, you know, in the long run, it's better to just spare MMR, so maybe it is worth it if you know you're going to have time to play thousands of games in the season. But if you're at 0 LP, the next loss can potentially demote you, right? The next loss has a very big chance of demoting you. So if you're at 3 LP and the dodge will put you at 0 LP, then it's probably, unless the, the game is so unwinnable that you have to dodge it, you shouldn't dodge. But if you are at 0 LP, right, if you are already at 0 LP, then it's not the worst idea to dodge. Because there is no difference between 0 LP and negative LP. You know, when you dodge at 0 LP, you have negative LP. And it's it counts the same. If you lose a game at 0 LP, the likelihood of you demoting is the same if you lose a game at negative LP. So, you know, if you dodge in at 0 LP, it's basically no problem, right? So it's fine to dodge at 0 LP. If you're at an amount of LP, like 99, 90, whatever, where one win, one win will get you to a promo series, then you should probably just dodge as much as you want. Now, this doesn't really work anymore with League, in terms of like, you know, divisions, because there are no promos between divisions. So like, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. You should still be dodging, like, you know, j just count a division instead of one to 100 LP, count the whole league as zero to 500 in your head. So it's like, you know, there are no promos, it's just one ladder. So dodge as much as you want, basically. But, you know, if you're at diamond one or platinum one, and you're at 90 LP, the next one is going to get you to a promo to the new league, then you should probably dodge, like, you know, until you get a team that you're comfortable with. Because, like, you know, like, you basically have a free dodge. Because negative 3 LP to 99, it's like 96 LP left, you know. One win is still going to get you to the promos. So don't worry about dodging if, you if like, one game will give you enough LP to get your promos. So, yeah. Um, the, the next thing that you should be, you know, um, worrying about in terms of looking at your teammates is do you have Smurfs on your team? You know, now this is basically from my experience, but you know, so you can take this for a grain of salt or not, but you have to either dodge Smurfs or play with them depending on two things. Now, there are multiple types of Smurfs. The first type are people who are basically playing on like an account just for fun. You know, these players are toxic, these players troll, they int, they grief, they do whatever they want because they're way better than everyone, so they can afford to basically, like, you know, not care about your game. If you ever run into these kinds of people, and you can kind of tell by their attitude in Champ Select, then avoid them, because this guy does not care about your game. He does not have a good attitude. He's probably watching something on Netflix. He does not care, so avoid this guy. But if you have a Smurf on your team, who does not care about talking to you, being toxic, is just silent, good picks, and basically just keeps to himself, 
then you should probably play this game out. Because this guy doesn't care about anything except winning. This It's like a professional. You know, this guy's just there to win that game. So, like, you know, if you have these kinds of smurfs, then it's probably a good idea to play the game. If they have, like, a Doku smurfs, it's also a good idea to play the game because, you know, these guys are likely going to win. And, yeah. So, I think that is the end of this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. And I know it's a very, very long video, but I'll try to timestamp it on YouTube so it's, you know, easier to digest. But, yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.